this meeting is uh, to wrap up what we did during the last uh, three years. Uh, conclude with uh, the scientific uh, questions. This is the final meeting, the so-called wrap-up meeting for the Nano2 Hybrids project. Most of the team members are here, and also the project officer of the European Union, Mikola Zubinski. Everything will have to be filed at the European Commission through Mr. Zubinski uh, within the next 45 days. It's a fascinating story. Uh, I think it's five years ago now when Jean-Jacques called me and asked me if we could build something together and create a, a crazy proposal at the beginning. Procedures. Everybody. Our first meeting was three years ago in Brussels. The kickoff meeting brought the eight teams together, most meeting each other for the first time. Mixing people from theory and material science and a small company. And at the beginning, the idea was completely crazy. The idea is this. They take nanotubes and build metal structures of just a few atoms onto the tube's surface. Billions of these nanotubes are made into a paste, and that is spread thinly onto some electrodes that are printed on a small square of plastic. They believe they can develop this device into the smallest, cheapest and most sensitive device ever made to detect gases. But to get there means some groundbreaking fundamental research. At the beginning of this project, uh, I, I, re I personally don't, don't know that we are going to succeed because I saw that this is so difficult uh, from the mm, technical point of view. We knew at the beginning that it won't be easy to, to, have a, to make the nanotube sensitive to benzene. This we, we knew from the beginning. So it was, it was, uh, there was a lot of struggling with this. About the middle of the project, we went into a, a crisis. A uh, decision had to be taken on which metals we had to deposit on the carbon nanotubes to reach the best performances. And really, there were no enough experimental data to make that choice. So a crisis meeting was convened and we decided to explore, to try to get more data before to come to a conclusion. The idea we shared was this. Putting metal spots onto nanotubes makes them sensitive to gases. Their resistance changes. We wanted to find the right metal to use to make them sensitive to benzene. But severe problems emerged. The metals we tried also reacted to other gases, as well as benzene. And the nanotubes took hours to react to a gas, and hours to return to normal. The changes in resistance were not repeatable. We had not foreseen this complexity. By January 2009, so we had some metal candidates, but did not know enough to make the critical choice which metal to concentrate on. Until the metal was decided on, Mark could not get on and develop the instrument. So at this point, the decision was already five months late. With fluorine plasmas or with ammonia plasmas. I was stunned. I think everybody was. Before Edward's results, I had a good idea in my mind what the metal choice would be. I thought the meeting was a done deal. And suddenly he presented a whole new selection of results that contradicted everything we'd seen before. And we were right back to square one. But the worst thing that I'm seeing, so we, had, we decided to go on measuring more, uh, more, me more sensors exactly. decorated with different metals and with different preparation methods. The decision on which metal was postponed while the laboratories maintained a crash program of making and testing more decorated nanotubes. At the meeting in Luxembourg, four months later, Edouard announced a solution that was breathtaking. We could not tell you about it at the time, but since then a patent has been granted, so now we can. The idea is not to have one, but have four sensors, and each has nanotubes decorated with a different metal. You can see the four. The four metals are chosen, so their response to gases are as different as we can make them. So when benzene is present, there are four signals to evaluate the meaning of, and they're all different. That pattern will identify benzene. For a different gas, say ammonia, there will be a different four signals. So by processing the signals simultaneously, we can identify many gases. 
And so finally now we have a sensor. So the crisis is solved. I have to say I was very pleased yesterday. We went to Tarragona and we saw Radwan holding in his hand a working sensor. And that's a moment I've been sort of waiting from from the beginning yeah, of the project and I wasn't the, sure we'd see it. So to actually see him holding it and he was pushing the buttons and showing me, here you go, here is the benzene level, we're measuring it now. That was, um, it was extremely nice. I think that, that's one of those moments that makes you think, yes, we're doing our job. For me as a, as a scientist, what I'm interested in is in the physics of the problem. But uh, the applicability of this uh, type of system is also interesting and we, 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 found, we, we not only found something, but something has been built from our, uh, our thinking. That's really, really great. Today we just saw this uh, prototype, so it means that the crazy idea we had five years ago, starting from a pure, uh, a pure idea, a pure theory, came to reality today. It's really, really uh, wow, something great that science can do. Uh, there have been a few surprises. Uh, Our experiment in using video was an important part of Nano 2 hybrids. The very beautiful outcome of our science communication work package with the videos, the diaries, the website. But unlike any other science project, they're going to attempt to take you, the public, along with them on the journey and to share the experience of doing science. Of electrons that move from one from the benzene to the carb to the metal we that the two carbon atoms here the neighboring atom will get closer and the third one here we have attracted uh, the attention of at least 200,000 times a person and this is really exceptional everybody here knows it's a it's a fairly unique approach to science communication in a e EU project and the results are very good. We've now got over 130 video diaries on the site and they've been watched nearly 200,000 times. So I was extremely pleased with that. Um, in total on the site, we've got over 250 posts because people have also been writing text-based posts and putting pictures on the website as well. And there are subscribers from 104 countries. So we're really touching around the whole world. What did the Commissioner think of this experiment? I think that approach is really an interesting one. I think this was a very good example of a potential scientific outreach approach, company, how it can be done. Uh, the project has also been fruitful on the scientific point of view. I think we reached all our aims uh, without too much problem. I say it's a really good project. Uh, for example, in terms of uh, dissemination of results, I would say they reach our average uh, numbers in terms of uh, publications. They have for three and a half years roughly 200 publications. Uh, however, in terms of patents, uh, they all performed our uh, average numbers. They have filed already two patents. One was accepted and they are preparing the said one. So three patents for this kind of a project is really a success in my opinion. But on the top of that, they actually made a very nice demonstrator, which not usually the case. We would like to see more and more um, such occasions happening in our project, but it's not always the case again. And they made the real working device and full credit for them for it. The project uh, started with the partners and I think the project is ended, ending with good friends. Finally, I want to say that I'm sad to think that uh, maybe with some of the persons on the project, we are not going to meet again because it has been so exciting and so, so fun sometimes to, to work with them and to think in possibilities and just about a small piece on all the cake it has been so exciting for, for me.